Oh, hi. This is David. And uh, I'd like to say a few words about this video, chain replacement video. Um, we did it uh, on a 2003 Cavalier where it failed in the driveway on startup, and we were able to successfully uh, do the repair um, on this vehicle. However, uh, there's always a risk with this type of engine where the pistons can come in contact with the valves uh, uh, when there's a chain failure, uh, that you can have valve damage. So uh, I'd recommend, if you have any doubt about that, um, doing a, at least a leak down test to see if you have uh, a good seal on the valves. Um, also, this series is going to be done up in about you know, six, seven, eight parts so that users can um, use the sections that they need without having to look at the whole big piece. So uh, parts of it are going to be specific to the Cavalier and other vehicles like it. Other parts are um, applicable to uh, Ecotech engines worldwide. So thank you for watching. Good luck with your repair. So we've got this uh, 2003 Chevy Cavalier and it won't start. It'll crank. It's turning. Sounds like the starter's really rolling fast, too. Almost like it's not loaded. So we're going to pull this apart and have a look. We're looking at the front end of the engine over here. Because it's suspiciously sounds like maybe a timing chain. Okay, let's disconnect the battery. Starters, let's take off this coil pack assembly. Okay, the harness has to come off. So we'll just lift the locking tab and pull that off. Well, it looks like this bracket right here is going to have to come out anyway, or at least loosened up. We'll loosen it up and turn it. I'm not sure it has to come off. Okay, 10 millimeter on this little bracket here. Now this is holding the fuel rail on here, so I think this is going to have to go anyway. Now the fuel rail is held on by a couple of brackets, so there's another one over here. So you can see right here there's another, another 10 millimeter nut on here. So break that one loose. That's also holding the fuel rail onto the uh, valve covers. And so we'll proceed to take that one out of the way. So with both those little nuts off, get the ability to get this out of the way. Now we'll get in here with a wrench and loosen this bracket. Okay, so right here it's 13 millimeter. This thing is, uh, yeah, the whole thing's turning. It's welded onto a stud. We'll see if we need to take it completely out. We might, but for now at least we can move this out of the way now and lift this coil pack. There it is. Let's just slip these cables off of this bracket. So I think maybe when we lift this up we can pull the bracket out. So there isn't much play here to get it off the stud, fuel lines off the stud. We'll see how this looks once we uh, have the a valve cover unbolted. Let's see if we can pull it a little bit up and then out that direct up and out that direction. And there's one hose here that they're it's bring coming over to the air intake. Get that off of there. Crack it loose and pull it back. Okay so there's ten ten millimeter bolts on the outside of this valve cover assembly and there are four underneath here. 
One, two, three, four. So we're going to break these all loose, and these guys aren't torqued much. I'm going to use a little power to get these the rest of the way. Okay, we're just going to town. are all the same length so far. Got to point out over here, they did use a, they have an, an engine ground mounted on this 13 millimeter stud that is going to be in the way. Let me try to pull this cover off. So. Turn this out and get it out of here. Yeah, that's a good view of it there. I have to look at these videos sometimes afterwards when I put it back together again. Okay, now taking our time, it's got a very small pry bar. Getting into places where there's a little more meat. You, know, you don't want to do it. I'm just working this thing. Here's another one here. Okay, we got it somewhat loose on this side. stuck on on the other side. There, I think I just heard the old bunk. Let's check it out. Now we're off. Okay, so we slipped it off, pulled it, and we're able to slip it off this fuel rail, um, fuel line connection here. And there is still this ground over here. Now we can turn this nut off here and pull the stud completely out is what happened. So make sure you, uh, you know, label it. It's coming out all the way. We'll label it. Make sure that we um, put back in there. Alright, let's lift it up and off. Okay, and here we have a loose chain drooping down in the middle. I'm going to get this air intake out of the way. What we need to do is there's a little peephole through here that you have to get through to get a band clamp off of the, uh, you can see it through here, it's right here, probably isn't going to come through, but anyway there's a band clamp here that you have to turn off, um, and then this band clamp here, turn off, this not, and then basically you can rock this up, just set it off to the side. It doesn't really need to be to be uh, taken right out of the vehicle. Here we rotated the crankshaft sprocket to where it lines up. It's really hard to see here. There's a little raised line on the cover and just a small notch on the inside of the of the crank pulley. I just show this timing relationship again with the harmonic balancer and the timing mark that's on the uh, cover. It's hard to see when it's in the car. You, can probably, you should be able to see now. There it is right there, that little line, tiny line, raised line, mar lined up with this cutout right here. When those two are lined up, you also get the keyway right here, up at 12 o'clock, straight up. Got those lined up, and um, when we've checked number one cylinder. Okay, here's my indicator of uh, piston position in the cylinder. The lower one would be piston at top dead center. The longer one is going to be piston at bottom. Okay, spark plugs out. Our little, our little indicator is in. 
and it's at the lower mark, so piston's at top. So with the timing chain uh, is having, ju having had jumped, um, the relationship is lost between those two cams, and that's why um, we're not getting any compression. Okay, if you want to go ahead and check out part two, we're going to be busy uh, busting the lug nuts, jacking it up, setting it down on stands, removing the right front wheel, removing this cover here, um, as well as then the crank pulley, bolt, crank pulley, uh, the drive belt, the tensioner for the drive belt, and finally the uh, timing cover. So stay tuned.